here and I welcome you back to our machine learning course using Python. So today we are going to do the hands-on on variation in regression models and uh, basically we had a corresponding theory session where we have discussed in details the mathematical intuition. So it is recommended if you don't remember this completely you can go back and revise the same. So we are using our usual environment of Kaggle, a fantastic environment for machine learning, data science and deep learning. I highly encourage you to look at this environment. Okay, so let's start by doing some housekeeping and our basic objective today is to answer five key questions. The questions are how to do feature subset selection for regression and the search that we are going to use is best subset search. Second question, third question and fourth questions are how to fit a ridge model, lasso model and elastic net model. And all these models use a regularizer called as lambda. So we'll try to see that what is the role of lambda in, in different uh, features and uh, mean square errors. All right, so let's start by doing some housekeeping. Let's bring up a data set called as advertising. It has three independent variables, TV, radio, newspaper. So these columns gives the advertising budgets in this media. And the dependent variable is sales, okay? So what are, the, what are going to be the different feature subsets, okay? So the different feature subsets are going to be, uh, you know, we, it can be like TV, then so I will pick up the ones where there are one feature. So I'll pick up TV, radio and newspaper. So for shorthand, let me write NP and then I will have the two feature subset ones. So TV, radio, then TV, NP and then NP, radio. And finally, of course, I have TV, NP and radio. So these are your total seven feature subsets. So essentially you have three features, okay? And you have seven feature subsets, okay? So seven feature subsets, seven feature subsets means two cube minus one, okay? Two to the power three minus one. So this knowledge will be necessary when we answer the first question. Let's do the housekeeping now. Let's split this data in X and Y. So X has these three input variables. Now our first question is how to do best feature subset search. So in first step, all those seven models that I showed you, I build them and find out the training MSC. Then corresponding to this different feature subset cardinality, that means number of elements in the feature subset, I find the best among them. So what I will do is I'll find the best among uh, I'll find the best among uh, TV, radio, and newspaper. I'll find the best among TV, radio, TV, newspaper, and newspaper, radio like that. Okay. So finally, from two to the power n features, I will shortlist n features in terms of that training MSc. This is step one. In step two, we'll take these end models and evaluate their testing MSCs. So uh, sklearn doesn't give you any direct method to this, do this. So you have to code it up. You can use our code if you feel necessary. Okay. So we have used uh, just one important thing that is combination. So basically, you know, when you pick up with one models, you have NC1 models or N choose one models, which is combination. So that's why every time I have increased the subset cardinality and I have uh, I have generated the different subsets. Okay, so uh, this is what we are doing, and for each one of them, we are calculating the MSC. One thing to be noticed over here is that the MSC needs to be adjusted by number of predictors because it turns out that if you increase number of predictors. MSC can automatically go down. So that adjustment has been done here. These are two critical things I want you to pay attention to. Let's run this quickly. All right, so let's look at the different subsets. So as I said, so these are the different feature subsets and 
the following are corresponding testing MSCs. I will quickly look at which are my three best feature subsets out of the seven in terms of training MSC. So these are my three feature subsets. Step two, these three feature subsets, I find out the corresponding test MSC. So let's run this. So I get Radio TV to be the best, okay? And if I run, if I look at the testing MSE corresponding to that, the first one has 11.01, .01, next I have 4.747 and 4.759. So that's why Radio TV has been picked up, okay? All right. Now let's go to our next question, how to fit a ridge model. So you start by taking ridge model, importing ridge model from a scale and linear models, you also import standard scalar because that is uh, one of the things we discussed that ridge, lasso, elastic net all are affected highly by scaling. We are using a pipeline. So pipeline is a very interesting feature. So if I want to do certain transformation on the same data, right? So I want to do a missing value uh, analysis. Uh, then, I, then I want to do some transformation, some log transformation step by step. So I can put that in a pipeline and do it in one shot, okay? Uh, so pipeline is a cool object in Python. Let's first create some dummy data for us, right? So we are creating X and y, y on which we are going to use this. So let's quickly run this. And now let's see. Yeah, so this is how uh, our different values of alpha, the plot comes to be, okay? And if you remember that alpha equal to zero actually corresponds to a linear regression, okay? And uh, here what we have done is we have used different values. So we have used alpha zero and one, which are very close and alpha equal to thousand, it is almost shows no slope at all. So essentially you want your model to be uh, less sensitive to the change in the input. Okay, so that's how, that's why you add the regularizer component. So if you change, so this function actually plots this. So if you change the value of alpha to let's say 0 0.1 and you make this maybe 10 and you run this again, maybe uh, the changes will be better understood. Yeah, so let's run this quickly. Now let's look at the graph. So it's taking a little bit of time to come up with this. So basically there are a lot of iterations that we are running, yes. So you see now this red line is not so, not so much devoid of slope, okay? Though zero and 0 0.1, they are still very close, okay? All right. So lasso also will fit in very, very similar manner, okay? So uh, we are using different values of alpha, and let's plot lasso, yes. So if we plot lasso, you will see almost the same feature. So alpha equal to 10, it is almost straight line. So it is underfitted as we call it necessarily. Alpha equal to zero is your linear regression line and alpha equal to 0 0.1 has regularized it a little bit, okay? So let's look at elastic net, which is nothing but a combination of both. So let's run this now and you will see similar kind of features coming up here as well. Okay. Now let's take up another data set which is auto MPG data set. So let's run this and then I will explain what this is about. So basically here your dependent variable is miles per gallon. So basically each row corresponding to corresponds to characteristics of a car, one individual car. And based on these characteristics, its weight, its acceleration, how old it is, how much displacement it produces, you know, you, you try to find out the mileage of that car. Okay, so that's the problem. Now, uh, before I go and select some features, basically horsepower has some missing values but the missing values comes at question mark, so we don't indulge into a lot of housekeeping. We are just, we have just, you know, not kept the third column in our list of predictors, okay? In X, we have not considered that. 
Next, what we do is we simply do our trend test split as we have done for our advertising problem. And these are its different uh, descriptive statistics like count, mean, standard deviation. Finally, let's come to the question, what is the effect of lambda? Okay, so first we run this lasso model with alpha equal to 0 0.01 and then we say that it needs to be normalized and we are running for quite a few iterations. Okay, so let's look at uh, let's look at how this model is. So the way to look at the coefficients is you have something called as coef. Let's run this. Yes. Yeah, so these are the different coefficients that you do, that we have. And if you remember that lasso actually can make some of the uh, some of the coefficients to be zero. That's why lasso is a sparse model. It has a budget area, constant area, which is rectangular in nature. So that is the reason, you know, it can actually make some of the coefficients as zero. Okay, so let's run, let's create a data frame with different values of alpha. So if we pick from, we start from 0 0.001 and we go up to 10. And for each of the iteration, we store the coefficients in a data frame. So let's run this. All right, so this is run now. Let's plot this using a line plot. And let's see how it looks like. So see what happens, right? So as alpha, so first thing that needs to be understood is as lambda goes up, right? So the coefficient goes down because it's a regularizer, right? And also, lot of the features are zero even at a level of 0 0.01, okay? Even at a value of 0 0.01, some of the features are not being used by the model, right? So th that that's why Lasso actually is a beautiful model, you know, uh, catering to two objectives. So uh, this is what is, uh, now let's look at once the data frame, yeah. So you know, this is how it looks like uh, for different values of alpha. That's how, you know, it has come down. All the coefficients has come down, if you see, right? And once, you know, it is sufficiently big, you see that uh, all are becoming zero. Okay, let's quickly uh, look at the uh, TMSEs that we are generating, the training MSEs that we are testing set MSEs that we are generating. So let's quickly run TMSC and see how it is. So you might think that maybe TMSC will go down as features are getting to zero. So if you remember at alpha equal to 0 0.01, two of them are zero, okay, first two are zero. And you see there is a corresponding reduction in testing MSC as well. So two features we can reduce out of six features and your model performance doesn't go down. So that's what actually we wanted to achieve. All right. So now let's look at this for reg as well. Okay. So again, we have different values of alpha. We are running the model. We are training up reg. So let's run reg. And similarly, we are storing it in TMSE. Let's plot a line plot and see how the line plot looks like. Yeah, so it's taking a little bit of time, but one thing that you cannot fail to notice is now the effect is similar in terms of that the values are going down. However, they are not converging to zero. Okay, so that's one of the problems. All right, that's one of the problems that Reach has. It will regularize. However, you cannot remove any features. So this has been uh, this has been done pretty standard way let me just increase to 100 and see if uh, how the graph looks like if there is some change in the line so let's look at let's run this again and see how it comes up so let's yeah so yes, 
uh, it is showing it is further coming down maybe if i increased by further but that time what will happen is maybe all of them will become zero okay so that is that is one of the problems you know we we suffer when we are uh, doing with rich regression okay so to summarize these are the five questions we looked at and which are how to do a feature selection by the search method we looked at how to fit lasso ridge and elastic net one by one using test data or created data finally we took up another data set and looked at how the effect of lambda works out so thank you so much for watching this video and please give your questions i'll be very happy to answer the same thank you once again